The northern regions of the state of Gujarat in western India are a pretty dry area. They receive a meager 7 to 800 millimeters of rainfall in an average year, and almost all of it falls during the three months of the monsoon season from July to September. But visit here even during the height of the dry season and you will find lush green fields, a thriving agriculture that gets its water by using a lot of electricity to pump the region's deep ancient aquifers. Groundwater irrigation supports a booming dairy industry and the cultivation of many crops, some of which require significant amounts of water, for example wheat or cotton. बारिश नहीं है नहीं तो पानी कहाँ से है पानी है आपके ट्यूबवेल से आता है ट्यूबवेल से मतलब नीचे से है हाँ नीचे से आता है अच्छा और हम पियत करते हैं वो गेहूँ है गेहूँ नीचे कितना पानी है छह सौ फीट छह सौ फीट लेकिन कितना पानी आ, पानी तो ज्यादा है ज्यादा ज्यादा है पानी तो वो गेहूँ है गेहूँ गेहूँ हुई दिस इज प्रोबेबली अ वेरी ओवर ऑप्टिमिस्टिक एस्टिमेट हाई विद्रॉल्स ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर ऑफ द लास्ट थर्टी ईयर्स Withdrawals that are much higher than the natural recharge rate of these aquifers have dramatically reduced their storage and caused water tables to drop by an average three meters per year. Farmers are now reporting staggering depths of five to eight hundred feet in their wells. It is not clear how much water remains or how soon saline water might intrude and irreversibly damage the resource. <laughs> The older farmers still remember times when water tables were much shallower and only much weaker pumps were needed to pump it up. Lift 105 feet. And now? Now 800. 800 feet. Or horsepower? 30... 5 horsepower. Cub? Uh, one nine, uh, one nine uh, nine, nine it was five horsepower. Five horsepower. And now? Uh, now 72. Wow, why? Over the years, farmers have had to dramatically increase the horsepower of their pumps in order to be able to pump the water from deeper and deeper down. Things have come to the point that an estimated 10,000 kilowatt hours is spent per hectare in a single year for pumping irrigation water. This amounts to about 30 or to 40 percent of the total energy use in the whole state. To stay in this mad race to the bottom, farmers need to continuously drill new and deeper wells. An enormous expenditure in local terms, something like $10,000 for the bore alone. But not everybody can afford to stay in the race. And as always, it's the poor who lose access to water first. See, this, this particular farmer that he is referring to is, is in his neighborhood is a poor farmer. Mm -hmm. He can't afford to drill a bore well that goes down to a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. So that person is only living in the hope of getting good rains. So if the rains come, he is able to earn. If, if you know, he is able to get the crop. If the rain doesn't come, He's not able to get the crop, that's it. He can't okay, yeah. And are sometimes forced to abandon their lands. They are saying that already 60% of the, of the people from this village have already migrated to cities. Now this village is a village where the water tables have gone down to 1000 feet below the below. The bore wells have gone down to 1000 feet below the surface mm. and the water tables are approximately 700 feet below the surface. 
के रूप एक खेत में से तीन पाक लेता अब एक पाक लेता है तो नाउ फार्मर इज ओनली एबल टू इरीगेट वन बीघा आउट ऑफ दिस वेल अर्लियर यूजिंग द सेम पम्प एंड वेल ही यूज टू बी एबल टू इरीगेट टू टू थ्री बीघा Another ill effect of the falling water table is the reduction in water quality. Water with mud, mud and dust. With mud and dust. dust. Therefore, this is the sand that this farmer is getting out of his borewell. The yield of his borewell is very low. He is getting lot of air and this sand from the borewell. Pani kyu garam hai? कितने कितने फीट है पाँच सौ आठ सौ आठ सौ आठ सौ आज इसलिए गर्मी है इफ एग्रीकल्चर इज कंटिन्यू टू बी प्रैक्टिस इन दिस अनसस्टेनेबल वे इट्स फ्यूचर लुक्स ब्लिक एंड फार्मर्स आर अवेयर ऑफ दिस इफ वी कंटिन्यू टू बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन बोरवेल देन no more no because not under of water what so what they don't believe that in agriculture will happen after 10 years because you you ki pani khatam ho jayega aisa hai they feel that the water will get over one day and then they will just sell their land over here and they will migrate to city in in, in search of jobs gujarat is an extreme example but granular depletion is prevalent across all of india indicated by yellow colors in this map and constitutes a major environmental crisis facing the country for agriculture in india and in north gujarat especially to become sustainable farmers need to dramatically increase their water use efficiency or the crop per drop ratio as it is called here the problem is that the incentive to do this are lacking Water in India is not priced and the electricity used for pumping it is provided at a highly subsidized and flat rate which means farmers are charged a low fee that is independent of how much electricity and hence water they actually use in fact if gujarati farmers had to actually pay the full cost of the electricity they're using many of them would probably have to abandon agriculture or irrigation altogether things have gone so far here that our estimates indicate that the average cost of energy per hectare exceeds the average net income that is derived from its use one of the ideas we are examining here is to incentivize farmers to use power and hence water more efficiently by giving them some of the savings in the cost of the power provided to them costs that at present are largely borne by the state the hope is that these transfers will both incentivize and allow farmers to invest in more efficient and sophisticated irrigation technology like drip irrigation or sprinklers instead of simply flooding the fields as they do now surveys we are conducting in our study area are meant to gauge farmers interest in this and other ideas as well as to better understand the different aspects of the complicated groundwater economy of this region the surveys carried out with the help of the local Talim Research Foundation are extremely revealing and allow us to learn a lot from the farmers who are some of the most skilled and enterprising in all of India it turns out that the farmers are very much aware of the disastrous trajectory they are on and are already suffering heavy economic losses because of it and still they tend to expect the government to somehow save the day and we'll hear nothing of a reduction in the power supply Almost all of them blame the reduction in rainfall for the fall of the water table a reduction that has no support in meteorological data they wanted to blame the rain rather than blaming themselves hmm. for this case too the subject of the electricity supply is very sensitive here and farmers have strong reactions to our ideas the idea of reducing their water use in exchange for monetary compensation requires a lot of explanation to the suspicious farmers reactions range from the emotional to the calculated and from a willingness to completely abandon all irrigation to categorical no but it will be for all the years to come
इट बी फॉर ऑल हमेशा मिलेगा हमेशा मिलेगा दस हजार पर मैं अपनी खेती पर तीस हजार भी कमाऊ बीस हजार भी कमाऊ पचास भी कमा ले चार भी कमा ले दस भी कमा ले हाँ पर कल को पानी खप गया तो क्या कमाएंगे उस खेती में वो भी सोचना है कल को पानी खत्म हो गया Gradually, farmers may decide the proposal can benefit them, but ultimately, it is they who know best what's best for their interest. If water is cut, then what will happen? Who will take care of the tanker? This is the government will take care of us. Every field visit teaches us so much about the subtleties of this environmental and economic crisis. There are many economic, psychological, technical and engineering issues that arise as we try to adapt simple ideas to the complexities of the ground. But at the same time, as we end another visit, the plight of these farmers and their resourcefulness inspire us with confidence that there is a way to escape the vicious cycle. Until our next visit, fear milenge. Mm -hmm.